How's, uh, how's my audio? Let's find out. We're live. Are you live? I'm live. So we're live on, you said YouTube and Facebook? Or what is it? Or YouTube and Instagram? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. And I'm checking now. But it should be running. gonna give it maybe five minutes till we start this up I guess we got 15 people on right now so we'll see Danny's here in spirit yeah Adrian mind putting these into the uh, group chats and page uh, or the, the local page yeah Ono here. comments or anything fun that, that's worth uh, noting? Volume was low. I'm holding it now, so we're good. Or say again? Volume was low. Let me let us know if the volume's still low, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're just working off the phone for Facebook. Let's keep it running. Uh, On YouTube, I said long legs, long legs look sexy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I shared the YouTube and Facebook one. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to see if I can share the Instagram one. Uh, I've never shared the Instagram one. Yeah, sorry we took a little bit long to get this started, guys, but maybe we'll give it like one or two minutes left, one or two minutes more, and then we'll get this going. The P13 will be able to handle these thighs. We. <laughs> do this Might as well hi guys uh, thanks for being here today we have the in motion v13 um, just like our predecessor the in motion v12 it's another seemingly potential street wheel is what I'm seeing uh, then again the v12 high torque is pretty decent off-road if you're not doing anything crazy uh, there's a couple of people, or a couple of you probably have seen this on other channels or so already and seeing the unboxing of them. It's pretty sick because this box opens up from the side rather than uh, from the top. So you don't have to flip the box over and do all that extra stuff to break your back. Um, yeah, let's get this thing even more open. Uh, well, even before that, let's look at these panels because InMotion definitely did more work on their box than the goat or any other company has done in current days. Um, so we've got the V13 Challenger. Uh, it's saying incredible lift speed of 140 kilometers per hour to let the speed blow you away. Or, or lift speed, yeah. But that's not the real speed, so you're not actually going to be able to hit 140 kilometers per hour. But if you do, then congratulations, how'd you pull that off? Um, See, upgraded adjustable suspension system, easily transform nut suspension wheel, or easily transform to a nut suspension wheel. So you can keep all the weight, but at the same time be able to ride the wheel as nut suspension. That's probably something I'm going to end up doing, um, depending on how the ride feel is, but we'll see as we get there. Um, user friendly modular design, easy and pleasant maintenance. We'll find that out when we have to swap a tire, because definitely the first thing that I want to do on this is swap it out to something that's not a knobby or I mean I'm okay with knobbies but then the problem with the current knobby at least depicted in the picture and the other models that have come out right now uh, the track pattern on the knobs don't really 
makes sense for electric unicycles because you're on a single wheel and you need to not get caught on the little uh, gaps in between the knobs. Uh, anyways, let's see what we got. We got this open. This is nice. So, this is technically my second time opening. I turned it, I opened it just to turn it on to make sure that it's functioning. And it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm, tell, I'm not gonna lie about that. There's no, no point. This is an unboxing. This is showing what you guys would end up seeing. But yeah, literally from the box, this is what you'd see. A lot of electric unicycles you end up seeing normally end up having the plastic wrapper outside of this, but they kind of just throw it in there, which is pretty neat because it reduces the amount of steps. Uh, inside here, we've got foam. We have our 3M foam pads. They're reasonably soft. Just squishing it with one hand, you can feel uh, a decent amount of softness. We'll see how much utility they have. I'm just gonna throw those off to the side for now. Uh, same thing with our power pad and brake pad. So for you guys that are gonna be riding this thing, um, usually you wanna make sure that the angled side is gonna be on the front or the power pad side, and then the or pretty much when you're lining up the top edge, the brake pad is usually on the back side. Um, they're soft, I'm happy about that. The design, as far as the shape goes, still doesn't make me happy because a lot of companies and a lot of even, even third party companies, they're doing 90 degree angles when our legs are more natural to be against a, or fitting against a wedge. Thank you, thank you. I'll take that off. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. This looks like it's for the heel. Um, this is the kind of wedge that I'm happy with seeing on electric unicycles. Uh, definitely more ergonomic. This is supposed to be on the heel side to keep your foot from sliding back. So a lot of people end up putting the, literally just the uh, toe pad on just to be able to lift the wheel. So yes, you can lift the wheel, but the problem is oftentimes you end up sliding your foot back and then in doing so you end up putting yourself into an unsafe riding position. Uh, let's note those later. So we've got our wheel on to keep it from falling out. But this one, Pretty nice because we have our two handles and we can pull this away for a second. I'm gonna put this wheel on its side. How much weight is this wheel supposed to have? How much does it weigh? Yeah. I think it's about 120. 120? I think so. Oh yeah, it's definitely on the beefier side. You could note it that for sure. We got more foam in the back of the wheel. Or, yeah, let's get those off to the side. Fun corrugated cardboard. I'm glad that exists. Because, what's that? 110, 110 pounds? Oh, yeah. Lighter than the uh, Monster Pro, or Master Pro, sorry. The Monster Pro was maybe one, or 95 pounds. And then the Master Pro is about 130-ish. It comes with these little blocks. These seem to be, do we know what these blocks are for? We'll find out in a second. Just little bracket looking pieces. Um, those might end up being for the suspension. Okay, I'm gonna take this box out of the way. I guess another thing that you could, this is just a couple QRs for the InMotion app. For those that don't have it already downloaded. And just more promotions of the Raptor controller inside, which is gonna have a significantly high amount of MOSFETs in relation to a lot of other unicycles in current day. So let's bring this up to us. It has a whole bunch of Warning labels it's saying, uh, watch your hands while using the handle. Um, we'll see these flaps. Yeah, you take these flaps off. There's a couple Allen, Allen points right here that you unscrew and then that'll give you easier access to your, uh, your air suspension. Unless that's literally just telling us to go directly in from there. Let's see, open protective carrier cover. Insert dampening regulator. 
Oh, never mind. Okay, so there's going to be a twist on connection inside this packaging to give us adjustment for our suspension. We'll get that. We'll get into that in a second. Let's see what else there is here. So you're going to have these little two rubber pads that allow for you to be able to adjust your suspension. Your lift handle, or not lift handle, the uh, your trolley handle is going to be right here. So pretty much you toggle it by pulling this little switch back. And I just noticed that now I had that spring to bring it back up initially. To bring it back down, just to pull it back again and do that. Please, just, if there's anybody that you're lending this wheel to, definitely don't just hand it to them so they can crank on it. Because my guess is it's going to snap because it looks like, oh, that's, that's metal. But even so, somebody's going to break it. Uh, let's turn this wheel on and see what we've got. So we're in transportation mode. Uh, could you connect to this wheel? Um, let's see. Thank you, thank you. What else is there to note? We got found. I'm about to find it. Oh, there you go. Connecting to it. All right, we have some plastic. Plastic going over that headlight. That headlight's pretty. It kind of reminds me of the V11. Um, nothing too crazy over there. We have our tail light. So when you're riding, that's going to be blinking. What happens if we... I'm just trying to activate the braking to see if there's anything. I guess while you're riding, it just blinks. Backwards, we get nothing. Forwards, you get blinking. Sideways, nothing in, nothing interesting. No turn signals, but that's fine because honestly, a quick snap, you don't need to tell somebody that you're turning. Uh, let's see, this is great to have. Uh, for people who like to dump their wheels, we have some extra protection right here to keep ourselves from having to buy full panels to protect our wheels. Or not buy full panels, but uh, have to replace full panels for when they dump their wheel and end up scratching it. We've got metal bars, or pretty much metal where all this orange is. So that's pretty neat. Um, rather than our Phillips screws that you would see on a lot of wheels. Oh, just kidding, there's a couple Phillips right here. Oh no, that's not even, that's a Torx bit. So we got Torx bit, we got Allen heads. Um, that'll potentially be a little bit better when you're trying to repair these wheels. Just make sure you're using metric and you'll have a better time because if you use like imperial bits then you have a higher likelihood of stripping them. Um, what else is there to note? Let's see this charging port. You got this little light. That's our lift switch, huh? Okay. So we have an orange button right here. Hold that, that's your lift switch. Um, does it make sense? Lifting it, you'd have to give away a finger. So you'd have to pull it up and do all that fun stuff to get it up your steps and all that. But then again, honestly, in my opinion, just turn it off and lift it up that way. Unless this is like a double tap. If you could like double tap this or maybe hold, or I would say double tap, because that would be faster than just holding the button. Um, to be able to lift it. So in motion, if you guys can give us better firmware for this, then that's something I would definitely request before anything else. Uh, on this back flap, we've got a whole bunch of plugs. So we have two four prongs. This is a 126 volt wheel. Um, we've got a USB port and a USB-C port. So for those that decide to charge their wheels while they're riding, you can't, or charge their phones while they're riding, you could, but Honestly, I would just use that to charge while I'm getting food on a break. Uh, what else is there on this thing? Yeah, again, trolley handle. Ergonomics-wise, it feels pretty reasonable. I was kind of questioning how stiff this would feel when you're pushing this around, but yeah, it's all metal here. Uh, right up top, we have some like really high-density foam. Or no, it's uh, just kidding. It's the same material foam as the pads, but it looks like it has like a little core inside, keeping it more rigid. Um, twisting it, it's not bad. For, I don't know, 
Part of me wishes the handle was a tiny bit back so then it would make it a little bit easier to use more like leaning action or leaning more, more leaning uh, pretty much uh, putting it onto his side to be able to encourage it to twist off in the direction you're trying to get it to go. That makes it a little bit easier and like say like the MSX line, not everybody's a fan, but having that allows you to be able to steer it with like two fingers. Uh, anyways, let's see. These pedals. Um, I partly hate them, <laughs> honestly. The uh, spikes right here, we have some screws, um, which isn't bad. So for having spikes, that's great. But at the same time, I think we're gonna need at least a little bit of grip tip, if not more spikes, to be able to keep ourselves safe when we're riding. Um, yeah, I would, I would double the amount of spikes on the outer edge at least, at minimum. And then maybe, let's see how their foot would be. I wouldn't put too many spikes down center, but I would add more spikes on the backside at least. Backside and out the outer edge. Just because, yeah, more spikes is definitely more safety. Uh, yes, you're gonna tear up shoes a little bit more with more spikes, but then again, also you could sub for grip tape. Uh, a lot of unicycles nowadays don't have grip tape, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we probably want pads on this thing, but it's still good. Let's see. I like it. Knobby tire is definitely wider, uh, or it feels wider. It's uh, probably still considered to be a three inch wide. Maybe a little bit wider. Let's see again. I'm gonna turn this off and see what else we have. Um, yeah, three inch by 16 inch tire. Uh, this is still considered a 22 outer diameter tire because of the knobs and all that, probably someone's rounding up. But for standardized like motorcycle or scooter tires, it's a three by 16. Um, what else is there to note? Mud flap, this thing's kind of girthy. I like it. Uh, having something more flexible is definitely nice because if you have something too rigid and then you end up putting too much weight on it, then you end up cracking it. It's got underneath some plastic, so this mud flap could exist without it, but it's definitely better to have that there along with it. Um, let's see. So just like other unicycles, or other uh, unicycles, say like the V12, we have our, hold on. I'm gonna put this like on its back just so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, so we've got here a little touch screen. Assuming that wants to cooperate. So we've got our max speed, board temperature, uh, single mileage, average speed, average power, and total mileage. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have current speed, you've got battery voltage, you've got the Average or available mile, or was it, oh, available mileage. So it's like a guesstimation of what's still left in the wheel. Uh, I wouldn't rely on that depending, because everybody rides different. And if you end up riding faster or slower, that could definitely make a huge difference with your range. Um, the, what is our estimated range for this wheel so far? Or at least what's, what's the paper saying? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I forget the exact number for that. Um, yeah, you guys can easily look that up if you need to, because we don't need to tell you guys all the specs. You can, you can I'm sure all the people really looking for it will have it available. Uh, is this supposed to be a fingerprint sensor? I forget what's, what's the sensor next to that screen. The, Right, right, right. So, top speed is 89 kilometers per hour. Ali, what is that in miles per hour? No, I'm saying 89 miles per hour. Oh, 89 miles no, per hour? It's no, it's not. 
The lift speed. Lift speed. That's lift speed. Yeah, lift speed. There we go. Um. Mm. Let's see. Okay, looking at these little diagrams, showing off. 55? Okay, top speed is 55 from what it seems to be. Thank you. Um, yeah, so these extra parts are supposed to be adjustable hangers for our wheel. Um, I guess already on this one, you're able to change the height of the pedals. Uh, I would personally bring them up higher just because that would give you a little bit better leg clearance for your knees. Um, how to disable transport mode, that would be just, this is just telling you how to open up the app. Uh, yeah, I'm just, for the first time, looking at this manual here. Um, yeah, user manual, quick start guide, comes with our power adapter, as in our, our charger. Um, our damper regulator, which is gonna be somewhere in this bag. Let's see what else. Damper regulator. We have an inflator for our suspension. Let's go through this while it's telling us what it's got. So suspension, pump, this one, I'm a fan. It's just a, just your standard, standard one with a little gauge going up to 300 PSI. Uh, nothing insane with this pump. Let's see. Undo these. We got a hex nut, kind of, yeah, some kind of hex nut adapter. Maybe that's for the axle or something along those lines. We'll find out when we ever, whenever we end up doing a tear down of this wheel. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna start dumping stuff and see what else is in this bag of goodies. We have extra screws for our suspension and hangers. Uh, M5 screws, more stuff for suspension and hangers, M4, or M5. Uh, these uh, came with two little plates. It looks like little shims that you'd be able to throw into the uh, pedals, or into the hanger to be able to give yourself a little bit more dihedral angle, because some people like to ride flat, but what happens is you pretty much imagine that you're Pretty much if you're standing on like a concave piece of glass or wood and you're wearing socks, pretty much as you're riding and you're bouncing, if you don't have a little bit of dihedral angle, then there's a higher tendency of your feet to bounce and slide off the side. And then along with that on longer rides, um, oftentimes your feet end up cramping because you're constantly trying to flex, and flex your leg and flex your foot to try to keep yourself on the pedal and on the wheel. So... Depending on like your ride height, it's all dependent on kind of where your crotch is and how how tall your inseam is. That'll adjust, or that'll indicate how much uh, angle you end up really needing uh, to be able to be comfortable on a longer ride. So it's got two ports for charging. That's cool. Um, let's open up this box. Yeah, we get a bunch of Allen keys. These little orange ones I figure are going towards the suspension so throw those off to the side let's see this little box and we've got a charger let's see these specs charger we've got our output 126 volt running at 5 amps so out the box we have a 5 amp charger that's nice um, because it's permitting dual charging, then yeah, 10 amps should be safe for this wheel. Um, I don't know how high everyone's gonna be trying to push their charging, but definitely look into the potential of these wheels before you end up doing anything unsafe. Um, let's see, dampening adjustment. These are gonna adjust, okay. How to ride has a couple <laughs> pictures teaching you how to ride. That's always fun to see. Um, yeah, it's literally just saying 
put a leg on, run around in circles, or ride, ride in circles while one leg's planted, use somebody to assist you in walking. I would never recommend having someone walk towards you while you're walking, just in case uh, anything goes wrong and then you're breaking everyone's shins. But then again, lower speed, sure, that works out. Um, yeah. Yeah, electric games wants to see the free spin. Oh, free spin? Oh yeah, sure, let's do it. So right now we're at 53%, so I don't know how well we can really judge off that, but yeah, let's do it. Um, are you able to hold the camera angle in a different angle for that one? All right, let's see. Just keep myself, let's stretch a little bit before I destroy my back. Um, okay. Let's do that fun lifting. Whoa. Okay. Okay. 30. Oh, maybe it realizes that it's lifting? Yeah, that's what the, uh, v that's the exact same sound the V11 makes. You have to get it actually cranked. Oh, you have to get it really going. Yep. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so that took it to 126 before. All right, all right. So that took it to 126 before it ended up uh, cutting out. Let's do that again. So let's get it going. So we're at 73. Let's see. 69, 73, 78, 87. Yeah, 126. It ends up jumping in speed significantly. Ends up jumping in speed and then cuts us out. Um, for anybody who's got more controlled hands than me, then definitely put it up in different forms and see what numbers you end up getting. But at 52% or, or what it's saying, 52%, it's saying that we get up to that 126 kilometers per hour. Um, someone questioned, uh, oh, someone answered it, never mind. What's that? Uh, someone asked not 143 and someone answered low battery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely it's more of a gradual curve of the uh, top speed before it decides to cut out. Um, yeah, so I'm a size 10 foot. Uh, wearing boots right now, palladiums for anybody who is trying to figure out what sizing that is. But again, uh, it's reasonably comfortable. Usually when I put my foot on a pedal, I'll tell people to put their ball of their foot and their heel and then use those as center points on the wheel. Um, so comfortably with my foot just planted that way, this is reasonable. Uh, my toes go slightly over the pedal, which is a good thing in my eyes. I'm always happy with that. Let's try throwing a little bit of paddage on here. What's that one? Oh, sure, yeah, thank you. Let me just figure out which ones we need to get on first, or then again, we can do them all. So, whenever putting on any four piece pads, then I usually start off with the insteps. So, biggest thing to note when you're setting up pads for any wheel, uh, you have your, pretty much you have your power pad, or the, the jump pad, then you set up your heel pad for just your heel hook, and then you set your front power pad and then brake pad. But then again, we also have. This real quick, because no other What's EUC up? company adds a tab. Oh yeah, it's this is beautiful. Godsend. Oh, this is that makes me happy. I did notice that. Uh, yeah, so 3M, they used adhesive that allows themselves a little tab to peel off. Because most of the you guys that have had multiple electric unicycles, I'm sure that you guys have been very much so tired of having to use a knife or having to peel the adhesive only for the adhesive to stay on the sticker itself or to stay on the backing. And then you have to like reapply it and then constantly pull it away. Uh, InMotion set us up for success with this little tab right here. So that's awesome. I love you guys. Uh, this pad, I'm sure it wants us to put this on the left side. Oh yeah, cool, okay, yeah. Extra foam things to notice. Uh, front right, and then the other one said front left. That's great, even more things to make our lives more branded, more easy. 
Uh, so jump pad. It's giving us this little bit of a wedge to uh, pretty much be a little bit more comfortable. We're gonna throw that there. I would round this off a little bit. So in motion, if you guys are watching this, I would take this corner, round that off more, but keep that bevel or keep that same uh, wedge angle because that's perfect. But this one isn't as like comfortable for this uh, specific portion of your leg. I would round that off maybe like by a centimeter in just to fit the contour of this portion of your leg by your instep. So I'm gonna put that right here. Let's see how that feels. I do like my pads tighter than most. Um, but so I'm just gonna throw these there temporarily. Or actually no, we'll throw them a little bit higher just so everybody has an easier time when they're first trying it. So usually I would make it real snug and then keep that wedge, wedge form to make it a little nicer. But it's okay, we'll do that. So we're gonna start off with the right side. I'm gonna do left side. I'm just gonna try to mirror these first. Any other questions that we can uh, note right now? Or no what, what do people got? Statements. They're just staring. What kind of statements, what do they got? We got, uh, Peely said, if this had the Sherman S suspension system, this would be a game changer. Oh yeah, for sure. You wanna compare it to a couple different wheel Yeah, we could definitely, definitely do that. You wanna do like the S22? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Let me just set these pads first. Um, yeah, so these pads, pretty cool. And then we got Clint and Dennis sending a bunch of likes on Facebook. Oh, nice. Hi, guys. So we got back right pad. This one, you kind of just wedge that in. So really, you feel like that bump where the little divot right underneath your ankle, that one is usually where you'd end up setting this little uh, portion of the pad. So I'm going to tuck that down and in, and then I'm going to press that with my uh, with my boot. Usually I wear chucks, but today is a boot day because I was on my motorcycle and my toes get cold when I'm on there. <laughs> but, uh, We've had a couple questions about whether the pedals can be replaced with aftermarket options. Aftermarket options? Uh, so what it's looking like is it's definitely swappable. So we've got this whole hanger system. Um, that's, that's easily swappable. Uh, we can try it in, in a bit after setting these pads, whether or not like big old pedals or insert whatever stock pedals end up working. We'll find out in a second. Healy asked, will you do a test ride? Test ride, it's super dark out right now, but I can definitely play with this inside and see my feelings about it. Um, but yeah, so far just looking at that tire, I hate it already. I hate the tire already. But I'll, I'll give it a chance for sure. That one. We have a pump for the tire. Vector says is the suspension huh? better than the, or for the tire. Oh, you want yes, please. EX20. Say again. Uh, Vector says this is. Is the suspension better than the original Bagod Master EX20s? Uh, that I haven't tested just yet, but we'll find out in a second. So. Power or brake pad, power pad. Usually I set the brake pad a little bit more forward because what happens is when your leg is, you want your leg to be like at that center point. If it goes like behind that point, you have a higher likelihood of wobbling. Uh, it's just a whole part comfort thing, part realistically, I don't want to have to wobble when I'm trying to slow down. Um, I also like my pads a little lower. So, what kind of tire is it? What tire is this? Yeah. CST. This is a Yuan Yuanxing, uh, Y U A N X I N G. That's a completely different company of tire than we're used to. Oh, here we go. Vertical shape compared to the master, yay or nay? Vertical shape compared to master? Already for the ma like com this compared to the master as far as like ergonomics and like my knees not getting destroyed over time I'm way happier with this Like I honestly might sell my master just to 
have this as like my regular commuter day to day. Um, yeah, that makes a world of difference. You, you feel a little bit of grinding from that, from the wheel as you're riding it. That's kind of nice. I like this. Yeah, so as far as power pads, stock pads for somebody that doesn't have anything, this is pretty good. Um, again, what I did mention with the, uh, rather than doing 90 degrees, I would add a little bit of wedge on the back, but this'll work um, because it's softer or uh, softer foam. I don't really feel my, I don't feel my calves getting too dug into, but I guess maybe for like a longer ride, I'd start to notice it. Uh, what else? Yeah, the standing on it again. I'm gonna grab this chair just to be there. Um, so grabbing this, when your legs are up against it, it's kind of hard to explain with my pants here. Um, the edges of the pads kind of keep you from really feeling how comfortable this, this wheel is. I'm gonna take this off just for the quick stent because I'm totally happy without, or not necessarily without, but as far as like the profile of this wheel goes, it feels the most comfortable out of any longer range wheel. Uh, for anybody who's gonna be standing on this, even if you throw like DKL, like a pretty much like rubber grip tape on here, that would make a world of difference. I would just ride with that only. But uh, yeah, th this really makes me happy as far as like just not destroying my legs. Um, when I'm riding on the S20, I guess we'll pull that one up. Is that one functional? Let's see. <laughs> so um, S20. Oh, this one's dead? Okay. Let's we'll turn that off then. Um, what wheels do we have to compare to right now? Yeah, okay, I'll go, yeah, I'll grab that in a second. Adrian, mind holding this one. I'll have my lovely assistant, Adrian, hold that wheel while I grab another thing. Oh, while we're waiting, Pee Wee has another statement. Yes. In question. Yes. Uh, Law's a hell of a rider. Thank you. I've seen a couple of EEC race, uh, races. Does Law enter races? If so, what makes a fast rider? I enter races, but I don't win. <laughs> uh, just because usually I... So my regular job, I'm a surgical tech, and if I hurt my hands or any limbs, then that keeps me from being able to do or assist in surgery, and I'd rather not have to sacrifice that. Uh, but definitely I'm willing to play the game and definitely get my good corners in. Uh, let's see. As far as being a good rider... That's a, let me get that seat back, I wanna, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, so as far as being a good rider, the things to note, uh, what, what do you end up seeing with like, say current day, like, I guess like people who win the current races right now, um, it really depends on the type of riding. So like street riding, you wanna be heavy enough to be able to get the wheel cranked forward, but light enough to be able to get the most out of your top speed. So what I've been noticing is like, say, show Douglas, they're all around within like the 140 to like 160 uh, pound like a uh, weight division area. And then they're able to be able to get that most of the, most of the top speed and get near to be light enough to get around corners to, I don't know, it, it's, it's uh, part of it is that if you're doing like off-road racing, it definitely helps to have a little bit more muscle. Uh, I'd say around like 180, 200 pounds is a pretty happy weight class to be in. Uh, say in like after electric games doing like the Thunderdome, you had people who were weighing around that, around that like 180 to 200 to or like 210 in that weight class. And then, I don't know, it depends. Like, so it helps to be able to do minor jumps and cute stuff, but then it also makes a nice difference to be able to... Oh, sorry about that blink. Yeah. V13 yeah. has a lower pedal height than this one, too. Yeah, that's true. The suspension's not inflated yet. Yeah, that's, we need to bring that suspension up also. Uh, but also, that's adjustable, and we can bring that up. Yes? Cosplay Diver says, what's the distance from foot plate to top of machine compared to the V12 
uh, high torque. Foot plate to talk to the machine I'm versus sure a V12 high like torque. How far up my leg, how far up my leg the V12 is. Define short in your case. We'll, we'll go off of that. But the uh, V13 feels around the same height as the V12, but ergonomically, it makes more sense in my eyes. The, uh, also, right what's the kickstand? Yeah. So it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's about the same. So the v, the, my problem with the V12 also is the pads that they throw on the V12 are, they throw on like foam that you're forced to use, and then that foam ends up pushing your leg out more than it needs to, and then if you try taking it off, then you end up with like a big hole on the side of it, and it's ugly. Uh, but on top of it being ugly, it's not comfortable. Uh, kickstand? Nope. <laughs> no kickstand, but you can put it on the front face or you can put it on the rear face and both do just as great of an option. Um, yeah, again, what I was pointing out earlier, uh, let's bring that a little bit more outside. Um, yeah, these edges, they hurt. King Song, you're stupid. Why are you doing this? Never do this again. Um, no unicycle should have a sharp edge without the pads. Like, uh, even Bigod, they're not making ergonomic wheels, and their problem really is the, uh, how do I explain it, pretty much, you don't want sharp corners, and then on top of that, you, want, you don't want your legs to have like a forced bowing. Um, with a lot of wheels, like say like the Monster Pro, um, and I'm, I, I feel like the EX30 is gonna have the same issue, but pretty much with it being too chunky, you end up riding for a long period of time. Uh, you don't notice it as much when you're like doing a little squat or whatever, or if your toes, if your toes are out, it doesn't hurt your legs as much. But well, a lot of people, they wanna bring their feet up against the wheel to know where exactly where they are at all times. The problem with that is your legs bow out and you end up sometimes wobbling depending on the rider. But uh, it, it's, it's all a whole bunch of ergonomic stuff that needs to be fixed. But in motion, definitely they have that covered as far as having that little bit of bevel for your legs to sit comfortably. Um, what else? If you look at like a, say like people who ride the big old Nicolas, the people who, oh God, sorry about that. Um, yeah, people who ride the big old Nicolas, those guys, they end up bringing their feet out way, like way far to the side. They're never like, almost never touching the inside of the wheel. Uh, that's just because that whole top edge is way chunky. And then pretty much if they bring their legs in, they end up having a higher likelihood of wobbling, especially with like higher PSI. You see a lot of Nicola riders end up riding at lower PSIs as well, maybe like maybe sub 35, if not maybe the later 20s. Um, yeah, so ergonomics, that thing kicks ass. I love it. Let's try to get that Master Pro in here. So, what's it? <laughs> All right, Master Pro, Adrian just got his, and it is chunky. So comparing these two, uh, even without uh, adjusting this suspension, I'm sure it'll go up a little bit, but I don't know how up it'll go. Then again, this is bottom out. Hey, you want me to hold this and you can pull it to try to get some hole in the you know, suspension? Sure, let's do that. So bringing up this suspension, uh, I didn't, yeah, that, that was about our travel. It doesn't really feel like it's going much higher than that. That also might be the negative chambers if there are. Yeah. Um, so we'll try upping the suspension, but then again, this ride is still lower than the Master Pro. Uh, not a bad thing, but yeah. Question. Another question, what we got? Uh, there's been a lot of concern for the weight of the new EUCs. Are you concerned of the weight? For oh, of the course. And other new entries? Definitely. Um, so the problem with a lot of weights is it, it's heavy. A lot of people want to use these as like trans, like pretty much uh, traveling vehicles or not necessarily like ride this only and do nothing else. Uh, like myself personally, I want something that I can throw onto my motorcycle or like just pitch into my car and not have to cry about anything. The One of the reasons I didn't buy the uh, Master Pro and also one of the reasons I ended up selling my Monster Pro was because throwing the car, the wheels into my car to do insert whatever ride or undergo on like whatever road trip, it took up too much mass. Or it took, it took up too much space where I had to put it diagonally rather than just in sideways alongside every other luggage bag or whatever I have in travel. Uh, yeah, bigger wheels aren't necessarily a good thing um, for doing long distance rides, doing longer cruises. It's awesome. 
Uh, battery sag, it definitely makes a nice difference with safety. Um, for those that are riding maybe 35, 40 miles an hour on a regular basis, this will, having the higher like watt hours definitely makes a nice difference for keeping people from going down and uh, dying earlier than they want to. Uh, yeah, it's, it's that lowered voltage sag because you have the extra watt hour. Um, but yeah, I, I do like the smaller wheels, say like a RS or, or no, not even like RS. RS, I hate the shape of it, but the form, the gen general form factor, I like it. it. It makes me happy. Next question. Uh, would you jump this wheel? Let's do it. <laughs> well, before you jump it. Okay. Uh, do you have an S18 compared to size with those? I'm curious. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. So jumping this wheel, it's not hard. It's doable. So that, that I want to have a little bit more traction on this thing. So no traction. These pads are still super slick. Usually what I would do is shave it down a little bit with like a Dremel or something like that. Uh, S18, but I did get it up in the air, right? Yes, you did. Okay, cool. We'll take that. But definitely I would use my own pads or literally just something else to give ourselves a little bit better bite. Let's try this S18. Does it turn on? Yeah, it does. S18 for size. Let's turn this light off. Apologize to those that I just blinded. Um, yeah, that's the height comparison. This is our S18. So the S18 reaches up to my, it reaches up to like right below my, uh, where my knees can make contact. The V13 is right at where my knees are making contact. So it's not a huge difference, but then again, you can also adjust these pedals to change that little ride height. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's the comparison. There's the profile. Someone and asked, the Master Pro pedal to the top of the seat distance is only 20 inches. Which to the top of the seat? There was more space. Does the V13 allow the Thank legs? You. To not be cramped up. To not be cramped up? Uh, or say that again one more time. Sorry. The Master Pro pedal to the top of the seat distance is only 20 inches. Wish there was more space. You wish does, it was more space? Does the V13 allow the legs to not be cramped up? Uh, more space as in you wish there was less bulk on the wheel? Because if so, I totally agree with you. Um, so like another thing with the master is they're making the wheels grow upwards rather than to the side because <laughs> you have a lot of real estate that you can throw batteries into and still be able to have a decent amount of wattage. Um, but yeah, with the master pro, uh, it's definitely, I think more so the issue of the, it's, it's not necessarily the issue of the height in this case. It's, I, I see it more as the width of it. So the Master Pro, you end up getting that like maybe centimeter extra on the edges. And with that extra centimeter on the edges, let's, let's bring, Ali, could you bring that back? The, uh, Adrian? Yeah, so if we bring that back, you'll end up noticing that's not comfortable to sit on. Uh, unless you're into that type of deal, but then I think I'll probably make a foam block just to chuck up on top of this till they end up coming out with an official seat. Yeah, this. Although you should mention my pedals are on the lowest. That's okay. So this is the lowest profile. So yeah, lowest setting is going to force your legs to be even more up on the wheel. Like lowest setting. Yeah, thank you. So my knee is pressed up against, or like the center of my knee is pressed up against this corner and it hurts. Uh, yeah, I, I, God damn it. <laughs> so again, you see how my legs more naturally want to be like stepping or spaced away. At least I have maybe inch and a half or maybe like three, about like three centimeters from the wheel to my, to my feet. Cause just because these top edges are way too chunky. Um, if I bring my feet like this and then I end up standing, I'm going to use your shoulder, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right. 
So just regular standing like this, if I do this for a prolonged amount of time, it's gonna hurt my knees because it's constant pressure. Uh, and then even more so, especially if I bring my feet in. Uh, yeah, the V13, when I'm standing on it, I'm infinitely more comfortable just because of that slope, or at least the, the slope that's on there and the lack of slope that's on here. Uh, I hope that answers some question, but definitely Gotta look. Give credit where credit is due, because of the way they've angled this profile, like your leg is just gonna slide right in. Like there's yeah. no, it's contoured so well for your leg. There's a couple on YouTube. Yeah, what you got? Questions. You got it? Yeah, thank you. Um, Still, here, let me take this out of frame. Thanks. Eastbud asks, I have a master. Aside from the safety features, is there any real advantage to adding the V13 to my wheels? Adding the V13 to your wheels, as far as like what or safety is it? This is like the only way to sit on this right now. <laughs> but I uh, say say that one more time. Sorry. Aside from the safety features, is there any real advantages to adding a V13 to his stable versus a master? No, uh, adding to his stable. Oh, adding. He has a master. You have a master. Do you have any other wheels? Because if it's just a master, then this you'll like it. <laughs> Honestly, the. Extra bit of range is going to be nice. And then on top of that, if you're into not having your knees completely destroyed at an earlier age, this thing will make you happy. <laughs> like, um, I'm a huge proponent of the shape of this wheel uh, to the point where that's kind of all this stream is about, more so ergonomics than anything else right now. Um, you did answer they're not, uh, if they're offering any seat options. Yeah, seat options, they, they better. <laughs> if you guys don't make a seat for this and it's long range, then what are you doing? Uh, with this wheel being high voltage, do you think it would consume the same wattage per mile as like a uh, 100 volt or 84 volt? Uh, so theoretically, yes, you're going to be sucking a bit more energy. But I don't know. Some people have told me that with higher voltages, you're still able to get a significant amount of range. Uh, I'm not an electrician by any, by any point, but I don't know, um, literally just ask the other people that have the higher voltage wheels. I'm not as knowledgeable about that. Alex apologizes for all the scale questions, but no, that's fine. Height? My height? I'm 5'10". Um, oh God, they're coming fast. 5'10", uh, in seam 32. Can you over torque the V13? Over torque? Yeah. Let's, uh, uh, do we want to do that with our only model? Let's see what happens. It should be okay. I mean, over torque without power pads. Without power pads, it's not happening. So I'm going to throw those back on. Yeah, no, it, I'm sure it's possible because you feel it like you, you can hear it like grind, grunting a little bit. But, uh. uh lights versus the V11. Yes, you can. Yeah, you you can over power, over torque it, power and braking, but it's not like the same concern as you would like say like a V12. So it has more torque than a V12, if not around the same. But also the V12 has a low, smaller diameter, smaller diameter uh, with outer or outer outer diameter of the wheel. So yes, you can over torque it. It feels like. Uh, let me see. I would compare it to like uh, maybe like an EXN speed around that. But it it, it sounds happier when it's grunt, when it's uh being pushed in comparison. Uh, Next question. Uh, what batteries are the two of them? Yeah, there's a couple over here. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> do you think that the weight of the V13 is going to be a challenge or uncomfortable for casual riders under 150 pounds? For riders under 150 pounds, um, it depends on what kind of rides you're doing. Uh, lower speeds, you're going to notice a significant difference. But again, if you have a street tire versus a knobby tire, that makes another difference. Where, as if you have a street tire and generally you're going to be riding street and like maybe light dirt paths, which most people do, um, it's not going to be bad. So I would. Going down at full speed would force your body back. 
Yeah, that, that could be a factor for sure. So, uh, yeah, lighter riders, you're going to get affected by the wind because it's a, a bigger panel. But at the same time, if you're also tall, then you end up getting blown by the wind just as easily. Uh, yeah, again, like for regular cornering and handling, it's... So the, the tire that we have right now is... It's a flat enough profile so that it's going to potentially be able to corner easier. Let's pull this out of the way so I can play a little bit. So dropping into the corner, like, so the problem with knobby tires is it's drifty at the certain edges or when it's, when it's on the edge right here. So right now, if I'm catching this edge right here, then I'm drifting. But then when I get under this edge, it wants to bring it back up. So doing small, tight, nimble stuff, it's definitely better for a street tire to be on. Uh, let's see. We could back the cameras up and really just play with this a little bit around here. Hello. Other questions? What do we got? Kyle wanted to see uh, the tail light and headlight versus the V11. Versus V11? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Um, someone asked if the battery cells and uh, what are the cells in the V13? Cells in the V13? Yeah. Uh, that I couldn't answer. Uh, what are the actual tire measurements? 90, 90, 90, 14, etc. Oh, 9090. Oh, that. It's literally 16 by 3. That's what it just said on this tire. But let's see if there's any other numbers on here. So, yeah, so one of the problems, or it's the exchange of having your batteries a little bit wider than uh, skinnier and tall. Um, so when it's skinny and tall, it's easier to pivot. But then with it being wider, it helps potentially with the stability at higher speeds. But then me just twisting it is a little bit more effort for sure. But again, as a wheel that's more intended for longer distances and just a different style of riding, uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, one more time, I, I totally zoned out. <laughs> That's okay. So I yeah. want to see the lights versus the V11. V11 lights. Let's do that. And while you're collecting that, someone asked, can the Emotion app watch connect to the V13? Not even do we have a, this, an, either of these V11s doing their thing? Oh, okay. It has to be a break. Okay. V11. So... These look very similar. It just looks like a sideways V11. They're probably the same light, but let's connect them. So on the right side, we've got our V11. Let's turn that on and off. And then V13 on. Oh, that's significantly brighter. Off, and we can do both on. Yeah, that completely gets overshadowed. So V13 headlight is definitely brighter, and on top of that, the throw is taller. The throw is higher, but at the same time, what's nice is they still cut it off at that midpoint, so you, it's not blinding people that are oncoming. Wait, turn the headlight back on? Yeah, sure. Also, you hear the fan. Side to side? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I'm a fan. Next question. Does Master Pro have more torque? Master Pro definitely does have more torque. So that is a huge thing to factor in for the people that are looking to power up through hills and people who are really like looking to get to a certain speed faster than others. Um, is it better than the Master Pro? What was that? Is, is it, it better? better? Uh, no. <laughs> so, or Monster Pro or Master Pro? Someone said monster. Monster. So in motion has never really been huge with giving you like insane torque, but, uh, or like instant torque. Um, so I want to say the monster pro gives you, gives you definitely more torque off the, off the line. And then master pro is not even close. We got, 
Less than 30 seconds remaining on Instagram Live. Oh, less than 30 seconds on Instagram? Okay. Uh, do we want to reopen it? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah, might as well. Okay. Sorry for all of you guys that are about to get cut off. Um, Yuko is going to be opening up another live as soon as this one shuts off on its own. Uh, come back in. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you in a second. Um, what else is there to note? Uh, we do have another question. Should we wait till Instagram go back? Uh, are you redoing it? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. Only, gives you an hour. only an hour? Oh, okay. Yeah. Boo. So nobody's doing a sleep stream on Instagram? <laughs> Try a sleep stream? I remember the one guy, Asian Andy, he ended up making a crazy amount of money on it. But then again, he also had speakers that were blaring at any point in time. That's what I was going to say. I always see those, like... Like on TikTok, you know, they'll show you random lives and you just see yeah. like somebody trying to sleep and then there's just screams and right. lights and you're like, what? It makes money. Ready? Three, yeah. two, one. Sure. All right. Yeah. Are we back on Instagram? Not quite. <laughs> and now it says Not quite. Connection. Oh, checking connection. Okay. okay. Now you're live. Live. Okay. Uh, next question is, does Welcome it back have Instagram. ride modes? Also, can you make sure to crank the pedal sensitivity to 100% for the torque test? Yeah. Okay. There are... There are pedal sensitivity modes for both, or like, again, the split was what you were mentioning. Uh, pedal softness I set to 100%. That's giving us that, uh, here, let's, come on, give us 100, there we go. So 100, we're getting this. If we bring regular pedal softness down to zero, then we get even more sag. Um, so some people refer to that as their soft mode, but it's also the, the whole thing of pretty much it's like the the speed of the wheel returning back to or not necessarily returning back to zero um it's the speed of the speed of the wheel giving in to the uh, amount of pressure because there's a difference between that like the softness of the pedal and actual like pedal dip so like pedal dip is most more so in reference to the wheel not being able to come back right away versus the wheel coming back down, or going down in the first place. Uh, I don't mind a little bit of pedal softness, but when it comes to like the pedal not coming back, that's what pisses me off. Um, power assistant? What is power assistant? I guess power assistant, assistant is the whole uh, being able to change your modes. Power assistant on. That feels the same. Yeah, I brought it up to 100, I guess. Let's bring it down to zero and see how that, how saggy that is. That's the, oh, that's a differential, I guess, but. Yeah, brake assistant versus acceleration assistant. So at zero. Uh. You feel it more, just a tiny bit more, versus 100%. Actually, no, I, I take that back. That's that's probably the, the same. Unless that's like giving you giving you give on it. Let's see, brake assistant. Okay. That I need to play with more to really give you a more in-depth understanding of what those extra modes really do for you. But uh, yeah, let's leave those at 100. But yeah, pretty much what I was testing earlier is that, is what we were talking about. Um, yeah, you get your volume, which is kind of cool. Uh, definitely set it higher if you're doing higher speed rides because chances are you're not gonna be able to hear what you're doing or hear if the wheel's beeping when you're at, say, 40, 50 miles an hour. Uh, balancing angle, you can change that forward degree for all you, guys that like that and then we've got 
Our negative, drop it down, negative 10 for all the, pretty much the uh, freaking crazy, crazy asses that want to give themselves a calf workout. I'm just gonna drop it back to zero. So for those that aren't in the know, um, as far as ride modes go, or as far as the riding angles go, it's better to be like a little bit forward when you're doing like longer range, or if you wanna have that little bit easier access to quick acceleration. But then if you're doing a lot of like off-road riding where you need a whole bunch of bumps and stuff like that, it's better to have your toes just like a degree or two up, just because pretty much if you hit, the, if you hit a bump with that angle, you have a higher likelihood of your foot bouncing off the pedal in an upwards position in a, off like the, uh, you think of it like pool. It's the, the angle of return. You pretty much, if you hit this with the, your toes up, then you have your foot pretty much bouncing against and bouncing up versus if you hit a bump and your pedals are forward, then chances are your foot's gonna be dropping way forward. That has a horn. So that's the horn. <laughs> uh, you're good. Oh, playing with it? Oh, yeah, for sure. No worries. It's pretty consistent, actually. Yeah, no, that's good. Another perk of having the extra water hours. You have less voltage sag. Um, again, so with what I was saying, um, for if you're doing longer distance riding, definitely angle your pedal a little bit forward. Just that'll make your life infinitely more comfortable. Uh, but vice versa, if you're doing off-roading, just for that extra bit of safety. Um, next question, slash comment, or whatever, insert thing. I said we'd talk about our feelings. How are you guys feeling? Yeah. What are your fears? Oh, I got a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does the suspension feel compared to the V11? Suspension feel to V11? Uh, we honestly never played with that yet. We'll so, do that in another video. Okay. Another video? Nah, let's do it now. We got it. Do that? Yeah, why not? Let's let's play with it and struggle you in this specific moment. Can go outside and ride it on rough terrain? We can't, but we can pump it up and see the differential between okay. our ride heights. Let's not see those orange nice points. Suspension yeah, everyone with suspension comparison. Um, okay, let's do it. While you're setting up, I'll ask a couple more. All right. Um, build quality looks insane. Build quality is great. Is this the best EC ever? Best built. Best built. Oh God. Okay. So, the Sherman Sherman S. That one is really quality. Um, the pedals on the Sherman S, however, are complete garbage, and I would never want anybody to be riding those things. Um, yeah, I, I I love this. It makes me happy. I'm all for it. Uh, and then someone's pondering uh, if. The C30 mo if it's a C30 motor, but with more poles and windings to achieve higher speeds. If it's a C30 motor, mm -hmm. so a high speed motor. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like that. So yes, you're rated for insert whatever torque number, but yeah, again, just like most wheels, you end up having to choose torque or speed, and then it turns into the question of how well. Or what, what is the winding for it? Because if you wind, a wheel, you wind a motor for for speed, you're going to lose torque, but you'll be able to have the wheel not stress out as hard when it's getting up to that higher, that higher RPM. Or not RPM, but a, it's that, that higher speed. Plus, as we've learned with I guess RPM. C30 and C38, actually, hmm. now at least magnet size is no longer the main determining factor mm -hmm. for torque versus speed. Yeah, that's another factor. So, yeah, you, you'll see like the bigger magnets on higher torque motors sometimes, but nowadays it's really just the coils and how the copper's wound. Um, yeah, I'm trying to follow these instructions. It's not as intuitive as Someone I initially says, thought. You need to pump it at the bottom. You need to pump at the bottom? Thank you, you're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> you're beautiful and I love you because I'd be playing with this way too long. How is the feel for technical riding? Chunky or nimble? Technical riding? Oh, it's chunky as hell. But then again, you put a street tire on this, you're gonna be able to turn way better on a dime. Um, as far as just being nimble, you put a good tire on it, it's gonna get the results that you want. Um, let's see. Oh, we got that little hex piece for that. 
Let's see. We're trying to get a feel for what's going on here. Mm. I don't what's up? Uh, can we see a bit of the pedal sensitivity comparison with the spin kill in between? Pedal sensitivity with spin kill? Um, I'm not exactly following. I think what they're trying to ask is if you lower the pedal sensitivity and you try to hit your top speed, like how hard, how quickly you're able to get up to the top speed. Oh, well, yeah, if it's, if it's talking about acceleration, um, yeah, it's, you're going to dip a little, it doesn't dip that much at the, I'm, I'm playing with the max right now, the, uh, the max stiffness, but I'm sure if you lowered it, then you'd be able to get up to speed easier, say without pads. But again, the, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a very, I'm trying to understand the question entirely with the whole the stiffness. Seeing the rebound is on the top side, the bottom is where you put air, open the red one. Open the red one. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, you guys are, you guys are awesome. Cause I did not do enough research on this. I kind of just have been super busy with work to look at all the unicycles around. Um, let's see. Okay, we have access to suspension. Thank you guys, you're my heroes. Okay. Let's get this connected. Someone who asked that, the same question, the same person who asked that question okay. responded with, it takes spin kill for pedal sensitivity and mode changes to take effect. It takes spin kill for mode sensitivity. So read that one more time. It takes spin kill for pedal sensitivity and mode changes to take effect. This guy's trolling. I, I I'm lost. So like as far as well, someone else is uh, responding with him. Okay, what do we got? Change the setting for it to take effect. You need to press the uh, spin kill button. Oh yeah. Okay, let's play with that. Let's let's put the suspension up real quick. Well, you didn't have to press it earlier, did you? And you felt the difference. Um. Yeah. No. It. It. it as soon as it beeped, and then it was. I was able to notice. But uh, yeah, maybe the spin kill makes a difference for that. The dual. The uh, dual modes. I'll try that out. Uh, what PSI are we trying out? Let's see. What's that? It might have it on the other side. I'll look at that. There was something on the body of the wheel. So the V13 is better. Is better a better wheel than the Sherman S? Oh, someone said 200 psi. 200? Beautiful. I just said it's 200. Uh, the Sherman S is only better suspension and bigger battery than the V13. Everything else, it, that is a run-on side. Yeah, the the Sherman S, that's uh, 3,600 watt hour, I believe? Question mark? Yeah, so the Sherman S, it's a completely different wheel. Um, the ride feel as far as like against your legs. I like the V13 better, but the Sherman S is way more nimble. I tried it with a knobby tire. I didn't exactly like it because of that knobby tire that was on it. Maybe if it had like a 2.4, like more of like a 2.4.4 on it, then I'd be happier. Let's see. But yeah, they're completely different ride feels. If you're looking for something more nimble, the Sherman S would be a nice way to go. Um, let's see. Sorry, Grillies, we can't answer that question. Which one? Oh, yeah, that. Or for which question? <laughs> what? What do we got? 
I'm not sure I'm it's allowed. Sensor. Huh? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm allowed. Let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm interested now. <laughs> what is this? Uh, like, how many strokes does it do with Jolly Alvarez? Grillies. Nathan Jolly. Or how many strokes does it do? Jolly Alvarez. Um, it depends. So, for people who are reading that chat, that's the Instagram one. How, how many how many strokes does it take to get the handle to go up? The answer is zero. <laughs> All you got to do is pull the uh, pull the lever. Just gotta just gotta get to the base of the shaft of the uh, handle, and then that'll be uh, all you need to get it going up. As far as suspension, not so many pumps. I'm gonna bring it 200 both sides. As was recommended by chat. Thank you again. What are they saying? Does the training handle a chance you ride an experience when riding seated? Say again? Oh, is this a trolley handle? <laughs> yeah, so riding seated with the trolley handle. Do not recommend it. Um, yeah, you, even if you're into the uh, extra control of, say, like having your cheeks like pinch between the uh, trolley handle, you're not, it, because it's metal, you're gonna slide. And then on top of that, you do have to worry about your tailbone getting crushed. Um, would not exactly recommend. Okay, now, red caps. Those are pumped up. Now we have suspension. Thank you again, chat. You are beautiful. Uh, Let's put this on. One person says, we know the new generation of the gold wheels had a simple design for easy repair Even more, entire Captain. change. I'm curious to know how the V13 compare, being that it has a shell. I'm just as curious with that tire swap. We'll figure that out down the line. So this is the slower return for the negative chamber. It's comfortable. Um, this, I would say that this is pretty similar to the feeling of the uh, of the Sherman. But then again, also it poses the question of will it bottom out in the same way the Sherman does? Jump hard. What was that? Yeah, I'll try jumping hard. Okay, drop that down. I did a little bit of twisting, like two twists. Oh, that's not bottoming out at all. I like that. Um, yeah, even that full bottom out is okay. It's good. Big boy slam, let's up the PSI on the tire before we do that. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, it, it's, it's good. I, uh, just playing with that now, I was pretty happy with it. I hope that this orange actually indicates that this, this rim is more solid, like the theoretical high torque version is of the V12. But, uh, yeah. We'll see, I apologize. We're gonna end up dealing with a little bit of noise. I'm gonna bring this thing up to, let's do, yeah, let's just bring it to 41 PSI. Did you already do split motor ride? Split motor ride I did, but really it just turns, it, it allows you to have more soft mode on braking or soft mode on acceleration without having to alter the other one. So my personal idea of it is if this wheel had more torque, then I would want to use the, uh, I would want to use more hardness on the uh, acceleration and a little bit softness on the braking. But again, I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. Oh, someone asked, are there two separate chambers on the bottom to fill up? There are. Per side. No, it's one, one per side. This one, I don't know what that is. Or the black that I was trying to pull on earlier. <laughs> but uh, real quick, loud noises, I apologize. Okay. Yeah, it was at maybe 35 PSI earlier. So we brought it up to 41. Definitely still happy with this. Person who asked for the split ride mode said with the spin kill. With spin kill. 
Um, oh, that's true. Well, yeah, I guess the lift test might be affected by it. Let's see. Ugh, okay, that's girthy. Again, I'm very happy that this is metal. If it was plastic, then that would have snapped just then. Let's push the button. Okay. I totally just knocked some V11s down, or at least put them on an angle. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I like it. Um, as far as, yeah, easier to torque now. Just because you're even more of a, you have even more of a lever on the uh, axle. Uh, what else do we need to note? I'm not sure, but they say love the look and the impression so far. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, even with the suspension, this adhesive got stronger within that moment. Yeah, I, I really like this travel. It reminds me of the uh, of the Sherman. Well, it, the Sherman has a little bit better, or a little bit smoother travel than this does. Uh, Someone asked, where does that clanking sound come from when jumping? Clanking sound? Uh, there's no full clank. Um, it's part the wheel touching the ground and then it turns into the travel. Yeah, that, yeah, usually that, that sound is my feet retouching the pedals. But everything else is pretty smooth. Someone asked, how do you like it? I love it. I'm probably gonna get it. Love it. The, uh, I love it, but you could use more torque. That's like the whole in motion, in motion uh, caveat. But well, you haven't even rode it yet. I haven't rode it, but calling it now. You, if I put a street tire on this, I'm gonna love it, and chances are I'm gonna get this as my own personal wheel. How does the suspension feel compared yeah. to the 11 and Sherman S? Say again? How does the suspension feel compared to the 11 and Sherman S? The 11 and the Sherman S. Uh, 11 is the smoothest suspension out of any wheel that I've been on, still, to this day. Um, for the Sherman S, it's good. Uh, both are good. Like, neither of them make me want to punch a baby. Um, we have one person asking, are you sure it's in off-road mode? And then another person is asking to see the battery improvement through the app, like each cell temperature. Oh, cell temps and all that fun stuff? Hold on. Looking at this thing and taking some of it in. Just gonna reset these pads. Burleys is popping up with. You said that the S22. You said that with the S22 and hated the torque. Don't make the same mistake. Stick with the goat. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's been partly or p part of my my thing with uh, with going like to and from wheels. Uh, I keep coming back to Bigode because of that acceleration braking. Um, but also, it is that like top speed that makes a difference as as far as like my wanting. Uh, now that like King Song in motion are starting to keep up. It makes a world of difference. Uh, but again, that torque is, you, you can't even touch it with an in motion or a King Song. Uh, King Song gets, gives you the torque, but it, it's not instant. It, it like sags for a second and then it'll give you some torque, but even so, you can still overpower it. Also, should we cap this live stream to the time? Yeah, yeah we could. So what time is it now? Quick spin? Yeah, but there, there's, no, there's no light. 
But yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay, you guys collect a little bit of questions and information. Yep. Let's take it outside. Oh yeah, don't go too far. Don't go too far? All right, I'll, I'll stay like, yeah, we'll stay like right we'll stay outside here. here. You want me to yeah. like aim a wheel at you? Yeah, so. Yeah, you could aim a wheel. That would help. So, riding this, I'm already happy with how it's not like dropping as far as like the, the whole sagging pedal dip type of deal. Okay. I come back at sunrise? Yeah. Like tomorrow? <laughs> come back at sunrise? So, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're able to jump over a parking lot space with no issue. I don't want to hit the curb per se. Bonk it? It's so heavy. And so the problem with bonking with a wheel like this, it's, it's doable. But the, it's smooth, it's doable. But then again, when you bonk something with this much weight, you have a way higher likelihood of your tire just depressing and then you end up getting a pinch flat on your inner tube. So, uh, final impressions? Or first impressions of the ride? First impressions is this wheel sags a little bit with the softness. Um, it said to hunt, or let me see. Power assistant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with this one more time, real quick. Power assistant off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, overall I like it. I'm gonna, I was riding at level at, at zero. If I bring it back to like one or two, I might like it a little bit better. Um, let's see. Pedal softness 100%. Power assistant. Let's see. Accelerating assistant. Let's try accelerating braking assistance. Oh, spin kill? Okay, you're right. Yeah. Let me let me try this one more time. The uh Okay. Kilometers per hour. Okay, I do notice that. Okay. Pedal assist. Okay, so the uh, power assistant. Power assistant brake assist. 
Um, so pedal softness, power, the power assistant, you have that toggled on. If you have that toggled on, the uh, acceleration assistant and brake assistant, if you want actual hard mode, you go to 0% on them. Uh, the acceleration and braking assistant, it gives you that little bit of drop before you, or to keep you able to uh, accelerating if you're a lighter rider. Um, and then, or more so, more so, you get automatic resistance if you have zero assistant. So I like that better. But uh, hey, what's up, buddy? Challenger has <laughs> another rider. Yeah. Not a challenger. Uh, that much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's let's turn this back into uh, pedal softness zero. I'm gonna do another lift test. Let's see. Still 26 or 126. 26. Yeah. Yeah, still 126, no difference. How does the brake feel? Does it stop good? What was that? It How stops well. Uh, it stops well. I feel like you are able, you are going to be able to over torque it at high speed depending on how you're how you're riding. Uh, it's, top heavy. it's not it's not really top heavy. It's centered out pretty well, like the uh, say like a V11, V12. Uh, I think again, it's hard to say because the V12 it does feel more top heavy, but I feel like this wheel is pretty balanced tonight. It's balanced nicely. Do you want to do like a side by side takeoff against the master? Uh, we can let Nick do that. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's at 49% battery now. Yeah, so, yeah, so no pedal assistant, no pedal assist, uh, or no pedal assistant for the braking and, uh, braking and accelerating, that turns it into full hard mode. Zero uh, percent on that one, and then you set uh, pedal softness to 100 percent. That is where I'm happy. Um, okay. Yeah. Right impressions? Right impressions, I like it. Uh, as much as I was saying earlier, the street tire, the knobby tire, I did notice when I was doing like a longer corner, I felt the wheel, uh, how do I explain it? Yeah, I pretty much felt the wheel kind of slide out a tiny bit when it was between knobs. And I would notice the difference between when it was like closer to center and closer to that middle knob. But overall, I like it. Um, honestly. I, I, I probably will end up getting this. What was that? You said you loved it before. I did love it before. No, I, I'm, I'm still like on that theoretical standpoint. Okay. But definitely I want to try to throw like a DKL, like the skateboard grip on it. And then rather than using, uh, rather than using these stock pads, I would make wedges with the DKL. Because that would make way more ergonomic, uh, a way more ergonomic stance. Or maintain that stance that you had without the pads. Would um, you still consider it as your personal wheel? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, current like current uh, perspective right now, I'm probably gonna end up selling a wheel to get this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Law. Thank Lola you. Lola, Lola, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Lola, 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 Lola. No, not anymore. I changed what? it. You I changed, changed it. it. It's just Lolaxina now. At Lolaxina. Yeah. So if you, uh, for for you guys that haven't followed me or decided that they want to follow me now, uh, yeah, just search up Lolaxina on YouTube or Instagram. I guess Facebook too, if you are bored and want to chat about wheels, please no spam about just asking about numbers. Uh, yeah, the, it, it's a good, it's a good time. Uh, I don't post much on YouTube, but I might, because considering that this is a fun wheel and I might, I'll, I'll see if I could take this home and give you guys a personal review and show you what this thing can potentially do. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, it's a good wheel. I think a lot of you guys are going to like how this ride is in comparison to other wheels. Um, yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Guys. Love you guys. Yes. It's yes? This is yes. But it's too slow. It doesn't go far.